cattywampel. Cattywampel. Cottywampel. I love this word. It's just great. But before I tell you my theory, because of course I have a theory on Cottywampel, yes. <laughs> but before that, I'm going to tell you about a really crazy story. This story started with a drive through the desert, relentless heat. It was so hot that if you started to sweat, that would actually evaporate before it could even drip that hot. And as we went, we passed scorched earth, black, where only days before, thriving villages had stood. And when we arrived, I found myself having tea with a warlord-like militia commander. Yeah, him and about a half a dozen of his men. They were known as Genjaweed. To the locals, that meant devils on horseback. They were the perpetrators of what had come to be known as a genocide in the making. This is where they had herded the women from those villages that they had burned to the ground. Women whose families they've murdered, women who have been repeatedly raped, some of them even branded. Oddly, the mood amongst the men that I was meeting with they were light and jovial. They didn't feel threatened by anything, especially not me. Behind us was the camp for the women. This wasn't like a resort camp. There weren't any tents. These were igloos of scrub brush where these women tried desperately to escape from the scorching sun and hide from the ginger weed. So I mentioned these guys that I'm meeting with. They're AK-47s laying around. Some of them within my reach. And I imagined, I imagined picking up one of those AK-47s. And before any of them could even realize that a woman might actually know how to unlock the safety. But that's not what I'm here for today. And I thought, not for the first time in my life, let me tell you, how the hell did I get here? I did not grow up dreaming that I was going to be totally vulnerable in the desert negotiating with warlords. <laughs> Definitely not. Oh, but let me put a little bit of context around this whole thing, and I'll come back and finish that story for you a little bit later. You know, a lot of people, when they, they read my bio, a lot of people say things like, oh, I could never do things like you've done. They're wrong, so wrong. I'm not special. Okay, look at me. I am not special. There is no cape hiding back here, and these are not magic bracelets. There's nothing special about me. Everybody can lead an amazing life. There are a multitude of speakers out there these days, and some of them some of these coaches will say to you that the only way that you are going to have an amazing life is to have a very specific plan to reach a specific goal. One of the most famous is a guy named Tony Robbins. His mega success makes it very obvious that this works for some people. 
On his homepage, it says, close the gap between where you are today and where you want to be. So this, for me, is know where you want to be and have a plan to get there. But what if? What if you don't know where you want to be? What if you can't even imagine the places you're capable of going? I have had the most incredible, amazing life so far. I hope there's a bit more. I've never had one of those five-year plans or a 10-year plan. I've had amazing experiences. Things like soaring over the Himalayas in an ultralight. I have rubbed shoulders with royalty. I even have a friend who is an actual royal. Yeah, yeah. And look at me now, I'm standing on a TEDx stage. Woohoo! Yeah, okay. So who knew? Who knew what this was going to be like? So let's talk a little bit about Cottywample. Cottywample, that's that great word. So Cottywample means to travel purposefully to an as yet unknown or vague destination. So, when I talk about purpose with Cottywample, I am talking about being driven with tenacity and grit. This is being purpose-driven and not driven by your destination. Now, I want to tell you a little bit about my journey. And put some things into some context and sort of let you know how I eventually ended up having tea with warlords in a desert. I was given up at birth. I was adopted, adopted into a family where there was love and also some pretty serious abuse. My mother, when I was 16, my mother lost an excruciating battle with cancer my brother, my brother and only sibling, was diagnosed as dangerous, violent, paranoid, schizophrenic. My father was a textbook narcissist. And by then, he had moved on to a far more outwardly acceptable family. I want to tell you about an analogy. My good friend, Kai Rannick, who's sitting right out here, she has this analogy and she says, she says, okay, she says, if you tell somebody that you jump out of a plane, they are gonna look at you and they're gonna say one of two things. They're gonna look and they're gonna go, oh, you're really brave. Or they're gonna look you up and down and go, what, are you crazy? So, yeah, you'll get that response. But then, if you tell them that that plane was on fire, well, all of a sudden, you're not brave, you're not crazy, you're just doing the most logical thing. I say, you're cottywampling. Let's face it, you're jumping out of that plane with great purpose. Yeah, it's called survival. Yeah. And you're not taking an awful lot of time to worry about exactly what your destination is going to be. Just so long as it's the ground, I'm happy. <laughs> All right. Yeah. So there we go. By the time that I was 17, my plane was absolutely on fire. And so I jumped. I jumped right into the regular army into a branch that was, until then, only men. That was my first real cottywample because I did something with purpose, but I, I didn't know where it was going to take me. I really didn't. And the important factor of that was that I did not run away. 
I didn't just run away. I did this with purpose. So I joined as a private. By the time I retired, I had a Queen's Commission. I was a senior officer, a major. And during my time in the Army, I took my virtual jackhammer to that cement ceiling. And let me tell you, in the Army in those days, that was no glass ceiling. This was cement, and I pounded cracks into that and broke it open. I was the first woman in our branch to teach defensive tactics. I taught and instructed weapons, everything from handguns to submachine guns, throw a grenade, rocket launchers. It was kind of fun. <laughs> I had quite the adventure. So by the time that I retired, I really started to wonder, what am I going to do as a civilian? Hmm. So I tried my hand for a little while at arts and crafts, and you know, that was really, really fun, and I loved the shows, and I guarantee I did it with purpose, until one day when the phone rang. And this was a retired Army colleague calling me on a satellite phone from some undisclosed location in Afghanistan. So he was telling me, he says, you know, I'm working for the UN now. I am doing security assessments and, you know, uh, making sure that, they, that people in the places that are the hardest to reach, you know, the people most in need in the most dangerous places in the world, I'm making sure aid gets to them. I thought, wow. And he said, you know, he says the UN's under a lot of pressure because they have never had a woman in one of these roles. Well, partly because there were very, very few women anywhere in the world who had the required qualifications. Oddly enough, my codywomple through the military meant that I had the time and the rank to actually qualify. So I became one of the first. And that led me to 40 some odd countries and, you know, exponential numbers of great adventures and wonderful, wonderful experiences. I had cottywampled my way right into my dream job. A dream job that before that I hadn't even known existed. So, what does cottywample look like? Cottywample. Cottywampa, what it's not. This is not working towards oh, someday I'm going to be somebody. No, this is making a difference right now. It is not setting lofty goals, it is not meandering along. Meandering along and waiting for things to happen for you. This is seizing opportunities with passion and purpose. It is not setting some lofty goal and having to live in the shadow of that goal. Instead, it is being open to all kinds of possibilities. It's not that linear focus on that, fixated on that goal. It's that openness beyond. So, what about you? Have you ever found yourself looking at somebody and thinking enviously, perhaps, oh, gee, I wish I could do that. Well, maybe you're selling yourself short. Maybe, maybe by picking a goal that you know that you can achieve, you're selling yourself short. And what happens when you finally get there? We have all known that person. That person who retired and then just simply faded away without purpose. So, let me tell you one more thing here. 
I want to say why this is so important right now. This is important because our world has changed. And there are so many people in our world these days who actually can't envision a goal that they would be able to attain in this world. No longer do we get to get a good education, get a job in our field, benefits, good pay, retirement plan, pay off your student loans, and we all end up somewhere sunny like Florida. Yeah, that world just does not exist anymore. So I want people to know, I want people to know that it's okay. It's okay to cottywomple your way through life. This can be incredibly rewarding. We don't have to have that plan to goal. You just have to be driven by purpose. So I said I'd go back to that story. So I'm going to go back and I'm going to finish off the story. This was, this was considered at that point in time the worst humanitarian crisis in the world. And it was, it was in the Darfur region of Sudan. This was the most challenging and rewarding time of my entire life. It was amazing. But you know, that, that conflict to this day has not been resolved. That lofty goal, that's not been reached yet. But that day I made a difference. That day, I, I actually shook hands with the devil, had tea, made nice, and managed to get access for aid so the humanitarians could come for those women. So what I want to say to you now is live your life with purpose. You'll get there. Even if you don't know where there is, you'll get there. And if you're wondering where I'll be in five years, well, I'll still be caught wampling my way along, that's pretty sure. Ah, uh, but, <laughs> hey, what can I say? It's what got me here on this stage, this TEDx Aurelia stage. And the one thing that I haven't mentioned yet is that not only is TEDx important, Aurelia, that is my hometown. That's where my cottywaddling adventure began. Thank you. <laughs>